Oh boy. We're talking about this today, are we? Anything beyond platonic friendships in children's media is, well, a subject to be handled quite delicately. There definitely are some do's and don'ts for how it's handled in children's fiction, but a lot of whether it's good or not is generally opinionated. You don't really expect a franchise like Thomas the Tank Engine to pay attention to relationships or romantic topics. It certainly is a theme that the fandom has mixed opinions on. There's a small number of occasions where it actually comes up in the show. Do I think it's been handled well? Or do I think it should be handled at all? Bearing in mind that everything said here is based on my opinions rather than objective fact, let's have a look. Before going into any episodes, let's look at the world that Thomas the Tank Engine is set in. Fans will already know, but if you're just someone who found their way here, this recap is for your sake. Sodor itself is a fictional island, and trains, amongst other vehicles, can speak in her faces. But apart from that, everything else is depicted as realistic to our world as possible. This is especially true in the Railway series, which doesn't seem to cover romance or love at all. It exists, of course. People are married, they have children, grandchildren even, everyone has feelings, but the Audreys really stuck to the world from the perspective of the trains, all of which don't tend to have any relationships or sexual desires that are highlighted. They just love doing train things because they are objectively trains, and that was how Audrey wanted to write it. As a result, the first four seasons of the show were just the same, but after his death in 1997, the TV show would produce original material. And that's where new themes and ideas started to seep in, including romantic relationships. Didn't think I'd be starting with this one. True, there's no in-your-face mention of love, but it's definitely the driving force of this episode. Season 5 saw the Fat Controller getting developed, becoming a more human entity than just the authority figure. The plot of this episode is him making a journey to his wife's birthday party. This isn't some important occasion that his job is dependent upon, it's important to him on a personal level. The Fat Controller will get to his wife by any means necessary, forsaking his pride and image if only to be by her side on a special day. A remarkable way of bringing the world of transport and relationships together, and a situation we're all bound to relate to someday if not already. It shows you how much a character values the relationship that they have. If I think about it, maybe this episode is subconsciously the reason why the snowman is my favourite of the John Lewis adverts. Here we go, weddings. These definitely come up in children's media a lot. The Rugrats, Phineas and Ferb, Bramley Hedge, even the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. As per this formulaic storyline, the main character is neither the bride or groom, but someone who helps out with the wedding. Percy is enlisted to put together the most peculiar good luck package for Mrs Kindly's daughter's wedding. This approach feels different, because instead of making the romantic aspect of the wedding a priority, it's a look into part of the planning and preparation that goes into a wedding. This feels more like an introduction for being the best man than for getting married, and I've never seen any other show cover a good luck package, well, except some cheesy line in Doctor Who. Again, the world of trains blends perfectly with love and relationships here, but on the basis that in-universe, it doesn't blend at all. This novelty of the good luck package devised so that trains can attend a wedding is so creative, and I have to wonder if anyone working on the railways has ever attempted this in real life. There is, however, a step taken in this episode that begins to make us ask the questions, 
where you know you're reading too much into a children's show. The Bride gives Percy a kiss, making Percy the only engine in the franchise to have received a kiss. What a chad. Thomas laughs, Percy blushes, and there's a bit of banter. It's left very open-ended and we never come back to this potential plot point ever again. So who's to say? I'm glad that it was treated as nothing more than a bit of fun between the engines. Nothing for any character to feel ashamed of, and it shows that in this instance it was all just harmless and kind. This episode ends with nothing more to say really, it's just enjoyable. Okay, so bit of an afterthought here. I didn't consider who specifically was getting creative freedom as of series 5. Britt Orkoff for one, as it is her company, but also David Mitten. Series 5 was made as cinematic as possible to show the potential Thomas had as a movie. What else has David Mitten worked on that has a cinematic taste? Tugs. In their universe, there's a different approach to relationships that to this day, people are still trying to get their head around, including a clearly significant relationship between Hercules and Lily Lightship. Delicious. Romance is a prominent theme in movies, so naturally it worked its way into tugs, or at least it sort of did. And I get the feeling that David defaulted to trying it again with Thomas. The question is, how much further would he have taken that if Magic Railroad didn't flop? This episode introduced a character who was written in a way that brings love to relevance. We've jumped to season 10, which is under a completely different team of people, with the writing style for the show changing dramatically. There's a focus on the engines being more childlike, with engines being relatable to specific types of children. Rosie is introduced as the I like you and I'm going to show you that by doing everything you do type of person. It's not far-fetched to say that some people at a young age act this way, when they like someone a lot. It's a way of trying to connect with the person that they admire. Thomas in this episode shows the polar opposite, being annoyed by someone who's copying them. The narrator also puts a lot of emphasis on how Rosie likes Thomas very much or so much. While it's questionable to only now introduce the idea that trains can have romantic feelings, it's possible that Rosie just sees Thomas as a best friend, something that's followed up in a future episode which I will get to. The dialogue is never explicit about how Rosie feels about Thomas in this episode. Something that bugs me is how Rosie follows Thomas around and even though it works out in his favour eventually, it's the reason he got into trouble in the first place. There's no validation for Thomas's feelings or consequences for Rosie's actions. A very one-sided depiction of how people should behave. This episode could have done with the respect for Gordon treatment. Neither character was fully in the right, but they weren't trying to do anything wrong either. There's also this thing about Thomas seeing Rosie as a weaker engine out of nowhere. Yeah, this episode had potentially a good plot to work with, but it just flopped in its execution. And finally, we come to the only CGI episode to focus on love, and the only ever episode to cover Valentine's Day. This is where everything is most on the nose. Once again, an episode about Rosie, it's a shame she barely got to do anything more than carry love stories, Thomas and Rosie are teased about the idea of them having romantic feelings for each other, which neither has, but it embarrasses them and causes Thomas to act irrationally. I have really mixed views on this one. This came out during the first Big World Big Adventures season, a massive train wreck for the show. <laughs> There's a very novel use of symbolism throughout this episode, where people or objects just come in pairs in little sight gags, my favourite one of them is the workman loading Percy's mail van. I ship it. Speaking of Percy, he gets to voice his opinions on love in this episode, and though he's a very different character 
two decades later after his kiss, his views are just as mature. He doesn't see the point in Valentine's. He recognises the extent of one's love should be expressed anytime, and not primarily as a special occasion. Diesel bullies Rosie at the docks and Thomas sticks up for her. In order to get the last laugh, Diesel turns the attention onto Thomas and ends up being helped by Bill and Ben, who just want to watch the world burn. This is very much true because the twins introduced the idea of trains themselves kissing. Cheers you little shits! The way Thomas and Rosie behave in this episode is interesting. Given the context of the story and the show's target audience, their behaviour is relatable and allows the audience to see the consequences of their actions, without having to experience it themselves. It's just painful to see engines with a lot of growth, such as Thomas, being reduced to a role like this. It is made up for in the final scene, with the two engines agreeing that they're just friends in a pretty mature conversation. No romantic relationship is forced onto the characters. In fact, this episode shows the damage caused when others push the idea of romance onto someone. Once again, the humans pull the really romantic gestures by having Topham use Thomas and Rosie for a short poem. Also, he can gift his wife with a cat. It's funny that with every new episode where romance became relevant, its presence has evolved. We went from how Audrey might have done it, to slowly bringing the engines into it, right up to almost getting an on-screen kiss. Should romance be involved in this show about talking trains? I think it's a subject that should be kept at arm's length. Acknowledge it by all means, those season 5 episodes really show how well it can be done just by letting the humans steal the show for a bit, and the trains existing as plot devices to aid their cause. It keeps in line with Audrey's vision of trains just doing train things, and doesn't make us ask those questions that we're better off not knowing the answers to. But introducing romance to the trains themselves, that feels like a step too far at least for me. Surprisingly, credit is due to a Blubber episode, where the topic is handled appropriately, even if the circumstances causing the episode to happen were quite questionable. We could well do without that fantasy sequence. Love has been covered in more platonic ways with the trains and it works really well. Take Henry's love of the forest, or the brotherly love of Donald and Douglas. I suppose if someone was to ask me about writing romance in Thomas and Friends, I'd say it's not a matter of whether or not the trains can feel something, but it's a question of how the train can act on their feelings in a believable way. What behaviours can we and trains relate to? What about a train's life can we understand and empathise with? I like to think that's part of how Audrey developed his characters. Perhaps it's something to keep in mind when working with characters in this world. But hey, everyone has their own creative voices, so do as you wish. Just be careful not to do anything inappropriate. Thanks for watching. Production's been a bit slow lately, but I'm still working on new content for you guys. I had a cold over Christmas holiday which really set me back, so everything's happening between uni assignments again. Not sure what's coming next, but all the same, I'll see you guys next time.